sweet. No Country Piano in F Minor by Tasman Keith on FBI Radio 94.5. You're listening to Race Matters. I'm Sada Khan. And today on the show, we have said rapper Tasman Keith in the studio with us. Tasman is a proud Gumbangia man from the north coast town of Barraville in New South Wales. Thank you so much for joining us today, my brother. Thank you for having me. We have a lot of... Um, creatives of colour on the show and whenever we ask them about, you know, how their stories and how their ideas mm. change on that journey, um, they always um, say that, you know, the initial idea was never um, what they kind of expected it to be at the end product. Mm. And I feel like that's particular for us as black fellas as well because, you know, for us, our story is never ending. It's constantly mm. ongoing. And so the shapes of our ideas are always never going to be what we initially expected. So mm. how has your craft kind of shifted amongst even just the last two years? I think it's just um, it's nothing that I kind of didn't expect because, like, I pride myself on how hard I work just on my penmanship. Um, but I knew that, you know, once I had to write the bridge to that song, it came easily because of the stuff that I've gone through in the past two years, you know, since writing the original idea. Um, it's basically just staying ready, staying prepared and going through the things, you know, we go through as black followers that, you know, um, leave us traumatised and kind of unfortunately stays inside of me until I write it out. And I'm I'm, I'm very good at accessing that whenever I need, yeah. um, which I think is a real benefit to me. Just, you know, regardless of music, just my mental, I can just, you know, bring it out when I need to. Um, and so I just mean that in two years, just staying ready, um, staying in practice and also just going through a bunch of things. It's a it's really um, telling there what you're saying about trauma and because like trauma really does live in the body. And so like, you know, to be able to know that music is your um, yeah. go-to as a type of healing, has that always kind of been the case for you? Is that, is that something you kind of found in yourself um, recently or like as you were growing up? Because you grew up in a big music family mm. as well. Yeah, I think, I think it's always been there. I started writing at eight years old. Um, and, you know, started performing at eight years old and then kind of really taking it seriously at 14. Um, other than that, I was playing like rugby league and stuff, which mm. is always a good outlet, you know, with black followers to see the music or sport. Um, and so I had both and I just got to the point where I had to choose one. And so I chose music and I kind of always knew that that was my way of, you know, letting things go. Um, and even just listening to music is a, is a way to do it. And I think in my community and a lot of, you know, Aboriginal communities, just music is so heavily you know, involved in our life, whether it's like uncles playing guitars or, you know, aunties that sing and whatnot. There's always like some country music playing or some like old school 90s rap music. Um, yeah, there's no real in between there. No, nah, there? there's not. <laughs> it's, it's one of, it's like, it's not even one of the others, both, <laughs> but it's just like at random times in a party. Yeah. Um, and so I think it's just like, it was evident to me um, at a young age that that was my out. Yeah. And I guess that kind of leads into my next, um, little question here is, you know, your father is a, a pretty legendary hip hop artist, YRMC. Mm. So hip hop and music has obviously played a huge role in um, your upbringing. Um, was hip hop always a natural medium for you to turn to when it comes to storytelling? And how has it also like just informed your own understanding of being an Aboriginal man in white Australia? It was definitely always like uh, hip hop. It was never poetry or never any other forms of writing. Um, I think that is simply because my father put me on stages at eight and it was just a natural progression and something I found that I loved. He never forced us to do it. He was just like, you know, him and mum were split up for a while. So he was like, okay, I've got the kids this weekend, but I've got a show. All right, let me bring them on stage because I've got a babysitter still. Well, you know, um, and so I think it was just something that was natural. Um, and in terms of like, I guess, finding myself within hip hop and how it's helped my community is just like, like I said, like, it helps with communication, I feel, and it helps, you know, tell our stories when sometimes we can't talk to each other because there's a communication barrier within a lot of our communities. And I know because I still, you know, deal with things personally. Um, and it's things like when I go back to Barrival and I perform, it's the most nerve-wracking performance I can do because I'm, you know, singing about what my cousins go through in front of my cousins. Mm. So it's like, are they going to... You know, how are they going to feel about what I'm saying? And thankfully, they're forever supportive. 
Um, and so I know that, you know, the the thing I'm building for my community is something special. And it's taken, not taken a while, but it's kind of, it's taken a lot of hard work um, going through things, going through trauma to get to this point now and even to more so the point I want it to get at. Um, and I see a lot of artists doing the same thing. And it's just, I think it's special because, you know, I go back home and there's little cousins that now come to the studio and just kick back. They don't rap, but they just want to be yeah. a part of it. Yeah. Or like, you know, they, they ask questions about film clips. They ask, they're really, um you know, kind of just, I guess, involved in any way they can be. And I think within our communities, that's important to show, you know, kids that we can do something because I think there's a lot of that shame factor mm. as black followers. Like, yeah. I, I think that's one of the worst things. Like, no, nah, that's shame. I don't do that. That's shame. Um, and I used to be like that as well, like to an extent. Um, and so I think what artists are now doing and, and you know, showing is that we can make music on an international level um, whilst also keeping it, you know, real within our communities yeah. and being representative. Yeah, 100%. Tasman, in the recent wave of Black Lives Matter mm. protests, we're also amongst our National Week of Gathering right now, which is NAIDOC. And I guess for me, um, the year this year, NAIDOC... Um, is making us all a little bit slack and um, because of everything that's happened. Yeah. So it finds it's a bit hard to kind of want to celebrate and I'm hearing a lot of conversations mm. from people as well. Being I mean, like, we celebrate every day though. Like, we're, this is the thing. Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah. We're black 365 <laughs> yeah. days of the year. Um, and I guess what does NADOC and the theme always was, always will be mean particularly for you this year and this growing conversation? I think, um, you know, honestly, like NADOC to me is just another week because we celebrate it every day. Like we said, you know what I mean? Like I, I don't have a week off not being black. Mm. Um, but always was, always will be is something that I've said before, something that we've grow, grown up with our parents saying, you know, going to rallies and saying that. Um, and so that saying in particular is always special and always resonates within myself and my community because we know what it stands for. And I think it's going back to what you're saying where that stands for something where, you know, we're still being political and forcing change rather than celebration right now because I think there's still a lot of things that need to change before, you know, things can be truly celebrated. I mean, look at the flag not getting flown, right? So, like, it's it's evident now that there's still a bunch of things that need to change before we can properly celebrate. Yeah. And I guess coming off that, um, what can we expect to hear from you and your sound going into 2021? Hard shit. Hard shit. <laughs> <laughs> Truth bombs. Yeah. yeah. Just, um... No, I just, I've just been working a lot on my penmanship, my craft, and um, understanding that, you know, at the moment people want to hear the, the hard rap shit. So yeah. I'm going to give people the hard rap shit. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. I mean, like, you know, don't be soft. Yeah, no, for sure. <laughs> like-